you've lived on both sides of the track, very, very poor, and then you've lived a life where you've made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Does money matter? You know, the answer is <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome back to the booth. My name is CJ, and with me today, as always, I got Justin Boff Shever. What is up, everybody? Yes, Pleasure sir. to be here, as always. Yes, sir. And today's guest, I'm about to introduce him, but I need you guys to do me a favor. I need you to grab a pen and a paper, because this guy is about to give you so much knowledge. You're not going to want to miss out on any of it. Here's a two-time best-selling author, an entrepreneur, personal life coach, a martial arts enthusiast, and among other things, he's someone I truly look up to and model pretty much all of my my traits to become successful in life. We've got Jerry Gladstone. What's going on? How you guys doing? Justin and CJ, pleasure to be here. Thank you for coming awesome. on, man. Seriously, it's an honor. Man, I went through this whole list and there's so much. There's so much. What, like, what, 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 what gives you the ability to go out and achieve all these different things? What's the mindset? One word, lifestyle. It's mm -hmm. a lifestyle. It's not a part-time job. Success is not a part-time job. Yeah. Uh, I learned it probably the hard way. I grew up uh, with tough coaches uh, in the bullying era mm -hmm. that would not, uh, you know, be so welcome these days. However, they taught me a lot of life lessons, and one of them was that you show me a successful person, and I'll show you somebody that works hard mm -hmm. uh no doubt as a kid i was the guy voted you know most likely to not succeed yeah uh, always did poorly in school always summer school uh troubled the law i drank too much i fought too much and uh that really bothered me mm -hmm. and i said well who do i really want to be do yeah. i want to be that guy or do i want to be a guy who's actually proud you know to to walk this planet yeah uh, so when i decided to uh to make that turn i think that really put me on the road to have a successful career and a, a variety of other things mm -hmm. and how how old were you around that time when you decided to make it make a change for per se yeah you know it kind of came um evolved over time but i remember now you guys are a little young but i watched the movie yeah it was called rocky <laughs> really? And I was only 16 at the time, feeling really bad about myself, like a lot of teenagers do. Low mm -hmm. self-esteem, self-doubt, uh, yeah. couldn't look in the mirror. You know, just I just didn't like who I was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I watched Rocky, and at that point, he made me believe that I didn't have to be the biggest, the strongest, the fastest, or even the smartest, but with heart, drive, and determination, I could succeed. So I bought it hook, line, and sinker. Oh, okay, I have to work hard. Yeah. Okay, I could do that. Now, it didn't immediately happen, but mm -hmm. that always, you know, sat in my mind that if you work hard, uh, you know, you can, you can outwork others and succeed. They may be smarter or they may do this or they may do that, but if I outwork them, chances are I'll be in a pretty good place. So it started then, but then in my mid-20s, just getting into all kinds of trouble. I really, as I said, didn't like myself. I was on one side of the fence, yeah. which I had all this self-doubt. I didn't like myself. I said, I got to get to the other side of the fence. Mm -hmm. So I did things in order to make myself proud of myself. And I worked hard. I started a business because I got fired for most jobs. I couldn't work for anybody. Yeah. So in turn, I started my own business. It was pretty successful. And that really led me on the uh, you know, the road to success. Yeah. That's awesome. When you started this business, though, you were working other jobs, right? I remember Absolutely. you telling me. Absolutely. And how many jobs did you go, like how many jobs did you funnel through? Oh boy. Too many to mention. <laughs> <laughs> Lots. I was selling vacuums door to door. I was um, uh, selling fruit drinks on the beach. I was working in a bakery scrubbing floors. I was a gas station attendant. Uh, I was a bouncer. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Bouncing that <laughs> on to a bartender. So yeah. when I started my business about 25 years old, uh, it was only a couple of thousand dollars. and It was in the collectible and consumer products. And uh, I really didn't make any money substantial for a couple of years. So I was doing personal training. You know, I was working the job during the day, the business, mm -hmm. uh, building it and hiring people. But I didn't take any money for myself. But mm -hmm. I also had to earn an income. Yeah. So I was uh, being a bouncer at night and I was also doing a personal trainer. So, mm -hmm. you know, wow. if you want something, you're young and strong, you have to, you know, you have to put your effort into it. 
How did you find time to like balance all this stuff throughout the day? And you find the time. Okay, <laughs> so you, you you work your job from nine to five. Yeah. You don't go into being a bouncer to to about eight nine o'clock, and then you also as a personal trainer, you know, you, you just work at Saturdays and Sundays. There's just there's time. You know, I always tell people too, like, oh, I don't have time to work out. I don't have time for this. I always ask them a very simple question: well, What time do you get up in the morning? Mm-hmm. Well, I get up at eight. Well, I get up at seven. Well, I get up at six. Say, good, wake up a half hour early and do what you have to do. So if you really want something, uh, because you got to remember, there's competition out there. Yeah. Lots of competition in anything you do. If you don't learn how to outwork people and get up earlier and and, and fit all these things in, then, you know, you don't have enough passion that you should have. It's not, it's not, I'm not faulting you, but if you really want something, you know, you got to get up. Time to make the time. Right? But oh, during definitely. that time, did you ever find yourself feeling kind of burnt out? Did you, were you tired? Like, were you, because how many hours were you sleeping? And like, I feel like a lot of people's, their excuses, yeah, they want to get a good night's sleep in and this and that. Were you tired during that or time? Not even a good night, like just a healthy night. So yeah. you can, you don't like, in a sense, deteriorate you know, when over you're time. Younger, like, now I need more sleep. Yeah. There's no doubt. But back then, I used to, you know, funny, I used to, you know, work as a bouncer, bartender, and then we used to go out afterwards, and I would actually hit morning traffic. You know, like 8 o'clock in the morning, people would go to work, and I, I would still hit that traffic going to home. You just, I just didn't need as much sleep back then, and uh, I'm sure I had my fair share of naps and everything else, mm-hmm. but my, my passion to prove the naysay is wrong, my passion to say I could do this and get to the place that I want to be outweighed any sleep or anything that I needed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that passion can really drive you forward. Yeah. For and like, sure. just for me, like we had a conversation, I mentioned on my last podcast that we had a conversation. I sat down, I told you everything that I had and the things that I was doing and I wanted your insight. Mm-hmm. And the things that you laid out for me has put me on the track that I am on right now. So did you growing up, I know you said you had that movie, but did you have a mentor? Did you have somebody to talk to and throw things with? My parents were great. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. They, mm-hmm. they knew how to love. Um, very a- briefly, you know, my mom grew up in an orphanage. She was put out on the street when she was just a little kid and grew up in an orphanage. Oh, shoot. My father, um, you know, uh, his father wasn't a good guy, so he lied about his age and joined the Marines at 16. Mm-hmm. And they always said to him, we don't know how to parent exactly, but we know how to love, and that's what they did. Yeah. So they were good, and they gave me the confidence, but if I had to really identify something, it was really coaches. You mm-hmm. know, I... I, I, I I played, uh, you know, football, wrestled. I did a variety of different sports, and I uh, I respected them. They were they were they were men's men. You know, maybe you can't yeah. say that this, particularly these days, but they they it was about grit and about hard work. They were a little abusive. Don't get me wrong, but uh, the good far outweighed the bad. So I think my mentor will probably coach us more than anybody else. Yeah, I hear that a lot. Like my my dad grew up um, around the same time and he was playing baseball and you hear a lot like his his coaches really instilled a lot of like their drive and their passion and that hard work and like you said that that more of like a men's men kind of coach where yeah. they're gonna get in your face and yell a little i always think of the i don't know if you've seen the movie or you but it's called junction boys mm. it's like an early 2000s football movie it's it's a really good one uh but i haven't seen it. it it's just like coach really makes these guys uh really work for it <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes it does backfire. Yeah. So I don't, you know, because I know certain guys that they were somewhat abused by the coaches as far as verbally and, and you know they demean you. Yeah. Uh, you know, these days I, I would hope it's more about encouragement. Uh, work hard, but it's encouragement. And I know some people who quit and never came back and probably never recovered and, and, and are scarred from that as well too. So fortunately, you know, it, it drove me. I'm a little scarred from it, mm-hmm. but with certain people, it does backfire. I don't believe I'm knocking people down just to no. bring them back up. You know, mm-hmm. it's not what it's about. Yeah, definitely. and I think that that message is kind of what shifted in the last couple of years. Where back then it was a little bit more of like knocking people down and if they don't get the message they need to get up and it's starting to be a little bit more maybe too much of like helping hand but even i remember my coaches at a young age and it was probably all volunteer work and i'm so thankful for those guys because they really a lot of messages like the one i remember the most probably seven years old uh jeff chikrin used to say it all the time but the only thing you can control is how hard you work and that's Mm -hmm. what he would say to us right before the game so that that's a message that you know he didn't have to be there like he was just volunteering to tell us that and it's something that has stuck with me the last 
18 some years i think anybody like you guys who played high level sports gets that message and yeah. i think it serves you well throughout your whole life it yeah most those definitely. lessons through through your life i think it serves you well oh definitely yeah and i remember those times where you know we are missing a little bit of the uh grit nowadays i feel like because i remember when i was a kid and i used to fluck uh flinch from the puck yeah. i had a coach his name was nathan and he used to take me out to uh, like the local rollerblade arena, and he would put my head with the mask on right behind the uh, net, the goalie net, and he would just take <laughs> like softballs and just chuck them at my face oh as my hard as God. I could. And if I blinked, or no, no, sorry, he used tennis balls, and what, if I blinked, I would have to move out of the way from the net, and then he would throw the tennis ball, the tennis ball at me next. So That's anytime awesome. I flinched, he would hit me with a tennis ball, and it got me to stop flinching. Right. That's awesome. Right. <laughs> That kind of it stuff could, does yeah, work. Yeah. Similar story. I was a I was a boxer. Yeah. And I was in pretty good shape, but mm -hmm. for whatever reason I was tired before I started to spar. And I yeah. was in shape. And it was just it obviously was mental, it was anxiety. And, yeah. and to me it was really holding me back. So uh I had this uh coach, uh Pete Brodsky, and he says, Hey, get into the ring and uh, you know, here's a guy, uh the guy was um the heavyweight uh golden gloves champion. He goes, all right, get there, don't hit him, just defend yourself. Put your hands up and defend yourself, and he's going to hit you, but just defend yourself. So for a full round, this heavyweight champ, who had a hell of a punch, beat the hell out of him. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Jeez. And I got done. I said, what the hell is that about? He goes, you're still standing, right? I was like, yeah. He goes, so what are you worrying about? You can take his best punch. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's awesome. I was like, wow, you're right. It didn't immediately help, but I understood the same thing that your your coach did. Yeah. Sometimes that uh, that hardcore stuff is it can provide valuable lessons. 100%. So it's provided me a great story for a few decades. So. Yeah. And for the podcast. Yeah, and yeah. for the podcast. <laughs> so let's talk about more the, the grind, like all the grinding that you did when you were younger. Mm -hmm. And... I, I don't, we don't have to dive too deep in like, I don't want to dive too deep in like all the money that you made in this and that. Um, but your first hundred thousand dollars, how did you make that? Because it's very interesting. A lot of people don't expect to make a hundred thousand dollars the way that you did it you or know, to make it. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I was in sales. Yeah. And if you're good at sales, you can make a lot of money. Yeah. If you're not good at sales, you're going to starve. Mm -hmm. So for whatever reason, I took to sales and um, it was great because we were working on a couple of hundred bucks a, a, a week in, in uh, you know salary, but a ten percent commission. And uh, you know I was I was just kicking butt with it. I was one of the top salespeople. And I read an article once that you know most CEOs, people who actually run companies, started off in sales. Oh really? So yeah, if you could sell up, you can be the greatest creator of a product, but if you don't know how to sell it, what good is it? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had the ability to understand, I guess, like human emotions and understand uh, how to walk somebody through a presentation, a sales present presentation. And I and I excelled at that. Mm -hmm. And so I made pretty good money at a very young age by doing that. Yeah. And that also helped me once I started my own business, I was the only salesperson there. And then eventually when I had a sales staff of like 20 people, I was able to to train them on how to, to actually sell products. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that was probably a good advantage for me. I never studied it in school or anything. It kind of came a little bit natural and I listened to the guys who were really good at it. Yeah. And I said, okay, I get I get what they're doing. You did know? you go to college? So I did. University of Rhode Island, full football scholarship. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm a college grad. And I did the five year program, of course, because academically, <laughs> uh, not too good. Were you were you a good student? Oh no, no you weren't. No. You, or, yeah, obviously, you just said that. The only yeah. reason why I think I got accepted was because of my football. Yeah. No, I'm and not a good student. Would Couldn't you comprehend it? Even if I, even when I tried, I could not comprehend. It. Yeah. I, I tried. Oh, you're not trying. I tried. Mm -hmm. That's at times. I was like, I don't understand what they're talking about. And yeah. I eventually said, hey, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I, I'm trying. And it made me feel stupid and mm -hmm. inadequate and everything else. Yeah. Uh, I, I, didn't get, I didn't get it. It didn't fit well. But did you not comprehend or were you just not into it? Because, I mean, yeah. you've accomplished so much. So it's not that you're, like, well, inadequate. No, I was inadequate. When it came to school, I'm not blaming them. I just did not. I have good common sense. I, I just did not do well in school. Yeah. Since I since first grade all the way through college, I I, I was lucky to get by, and I did not do well in school. I, mm -hmm. I, I 
eventually you kind of give up a little bit, uh, I suppose, uh, because when you try and you can't comprehend, you kind of move on a little bit. Um, again, I'm not here to blame anybody, but no, school was not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. So, so school not being your cup of tea, you probably didn't have like a favorite subject unless it was like PE or something. But in that sense, yeah. <laughs> but what in that sense, like inspired you to write these books that are sitting before us? Well, it's interesting. I'm not right. That's a good question yeah. because usually somebody that wants to write a book as an author would be like, yeah, he loves some, writing uh, academic ability. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting. I started the business and we were in uh, the kind of like entertainment art type of a business where we would meet and I would set up a lot of different meetings with uh, different uh, celebrities and successful people and movie studios, uh, you know, Disney and Warner Brothers and Fox. And, I, you know, I met people like Sylvester Stallone and, wow. you know, Howard Stern and just, just so many people. <laughs> Uh, we could talk for hours about that, yeah. how that happened, but it was it was it was wildly intense, and I noticed, you know, from from Snoop Dogg to Howard Stern to you know people in the book, Mark Cuban, whoever it is, Kid Rock, whatever it is, they all come from different walks of life, mm -hmm. different colors, different ethnics, men, women. It didn't matter. I noticed there was a common thread to their success when they were facing a problem they would all handle it pretty much the same way. And I had great conversations with these people. I'll never forget, we talked about Stallone. You know, when I was 16, I watched the movie. Yeah. And, I'm up, you know, we ended up representing him for, for his last Rocky and for his last Rambo in, in a variety of different consumer products, mostly artwork. So I got to sit with him one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one alone. Yeah, that's, I was like, that's oh my crazy. God, you know, they say never meet your idols. Not yeah. that I necessarily have idols. Mm -hmm. The guy did not disappoint. Mm -hmm. Because wow. I asked him questions like you got. I was like, well, how do I become successful? What about this? What about that? And the guy just spent as much time as I wanted. And he talked about how you have to get out there and compete. How people don't realize the ability that they have. That they're made of so much more. You know, these guys would be the first ones to tell you if they could do it, then, 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 you, know, then you could do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I sat there thinking, man, I wish my friends were here. I wish my family was here to hear it. And then I was actually talking to my wife, Brooke. And I said to her, you know, I don't care whether you're a doctor, a musician, an athlete. There was a common thread to success. I'm going to write a book yeah. called The Common Thread. That's awesome. So I sent a proposal to a couple of publishers. And they're like, I don't know, go write a... Um, you know, an outline of it and stuff like that. And uh, they wanted, like, you know, certain people with those abilities, which I didn't have. Yeah, uh, they want to see if you can like write. They wanted, like, $12,000 for a proposal. Oh, my God. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> I cut to the chase. I'm writing the book. Yeah. So I, I ended up interviewing a lot of these people, um, and it was fantastic. So what I did, I didn't have the ability. I, I'm not a Mr. Grandma guy, but I wrote all the stories. It was like 50 stories of all these different ce celebrities, again, from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? I hired an editor to fix mm -hmm. the spelling, to fix the sentences. But it wasn't, it wasn't about um, trying to write a book. Yeah. It was about really sharing my experiences to help people we spoke about the fence. To get from one side of the fence, which you have self-doubt and you feel you're a loser and everything else, and there's a lot of naysays there, it's about having people try to get to the other side of the fence where these people offer their words of wisdom. And like within the book, they're telling you what you should do on a daily basis yeah. at the end of each chapter. Um, so that's really what the inspiration uh, was. And what does that look like? Do you believe in to-do lists? Do you believe in, I've been reading this book called One Thing, and they talk about a success list, and you should do one thing a day that moves you closer to your goal. But I feel like a lot of people get that mixed up. So what does that look like to go from one side of the fence to the other? To well, build that confidence. Good question. Yeah. Um, I absolutely love a to-do list. I've been doing it. You know, I probably read um, probably one of my favorite books that I read was uh, "Think and Grow Rich." Oh, it's a great, a great I, book. Finished, yeah, and I read it as a teenager. And one of their big things were, um, you know, have a to-do list. Mm -hmm. Not only do I like having a to-do list because it reminds me of everything, but I love crossing things off. Yeah. When I when I accomplish it, like. Uh, you know, give the dogs the medicine now, or yeah. whatever that may be. Uh, you know, get to the gym, whatever it may be. I'm empowered by just crossing a to-do, you know, something off the list. Yep. So absolutely. What are some other things that you could do to put you in the road to success? 
you have to have a mentor. You have yeah. to have somebody who's been there, done mm-hmm. it. You should. You guys should all look up something called deliberate practice, and it's really the science. It was a scientific study uh, of success, and that's kind of where that ten thousand hour rule came. Yeah. Um, but you know, you have to have a mentor or somebody who's been there, done it, that's willing to share the success. You know, they should. Um, be critiquing your performance, whatever it may be, whether it's in business or athletics, as you're there, not criticizing, but trying to help you improve right there. Yeah, you want to be able to stretch, you know, your abilities, get out of your comfort zone, be willing to fail. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's a variety of different things, but certainly I've been doing it. I have a, a brown folder in my office from 1984, I think, uh, and I still to this day have my to-do list and I review it before I uh, before I go to sleep and, uh, and at night. So, I mean, and, and in the morning. Yeah. It helps wow. a lot. How do you keep yourself from writing down stuff, though, that maybe doesn't um, specifically add to your achieving your goals and stuff like that? Because I feel a lot of people will write down to-do lists that's like, make my bed, do this, do that, and it really, it's all movement and not really anything that's achieving. Just like filler. Yeah, like a filler. Yeah, I mean, you can have a couple of different to-do lists. I do, like, uh, you know, like now I'm, I'm married, three kids, and I have a lot of responsibilities. So there's long-term things that I have to do. Mm-hmm. You know, the kids may have to go to the dentist or whatever, or, you know, dates that are important. Uh, those things are also good. It's a kind of daily reminders. Yeah. But the, the, the list that I keep right in front of me are the things that I consider at the moment really important. Yeah. Like, for example, you know, I wrote down, you know, CJ, uh, you know, podcast, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Sunday, 11 o'clock. Um, We're on the important You know, prepare. List. <laughs> uh, so there are certain things. So you could have two different lists, but, but yeah. things like, okay, this is going to lead me to what I need to do or this is important. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I write down. You, you can't. I don't, I don't want to say you can't have uh, too much stuff. I mean, you don't want to clog it all up. Yeah. You want to have priorities, uh, but you, you could have more than one, mm-hmm. you know. So it, it, it keeps me sleeping at night because instead of thinking about something that, oh, I have to do this tomorrow, I know if I write it down, then it's going to be in front of my desk tomorrow so I can forget about it and, and, and go to sleep. Definitely. Yeah. You want to go? Yeah. On that same topic. Um, not like a controversial question because I do the I do the same thing. I have a this is actually my second journal because I just finished mine. But every morning and night I have like a whole I don't call it a routine but a flow. And I've talked about it on previous episodes. But have you? I'm starting to find almost that like not that I'm doing things just to check them off, but that like I'll write like my morning flow and I'll have like the seven things I do. I almost want to just not write the seven things and just write do my morning flow because I find that I'm doing them just to check them off sometimes. So you have seven things that you do each day? Like so in the mornings, I'll have like seven different things typically that I'm doing and it it doesn't follow the exact order. It's just these things that I do. And um, sometimes like lately, like if it's, it's reading, even though I'll get it done, I find that I'm just reading just to check it off. And then by reading, I'm not really like, in the mindset of reading, I'm just in the mindset of I'm just doing this to check it off. Right, and that's probably not good. But what I would do if I had seven things that I routinely have to do each day, mm-hmm. I would have on the wall, like it's almost a permanent thing. Rather than you don't, you, know, you don't it. have to check it off. Yeah, read every day, check off, check off. Yeah. That can get kind of monotonous, and it's just and it's, it's writing it because then every night I'm writing this down, and right. I'm like, so it's things like, that you do every day, I have a permanent okay. list right on the wall, and I have I have one of those. Okay, uh, of what I need to do every day. Yeah, you know, and, that, and then that's fine. Um, and you're not gonna, you know, you, if you're not in the right mindset to read that day, just to cross something off, you shouldn't read. But like I said, seven things, boom, right on the wall. Mm-hmm. The yeah. things that okay, I got to do tomorrow to move my life forward. I got to go to the store and pick up a new mic, mm-hmm. or I yeah. got to uh, test this, or I got to, you know, I got to get two significant people for my podcast this week. The the uh, the more important things you should have. Uh, they, and then once they're crossed written. out, if it's a permanent thing, it belongs on, belongs yeah. on the wall. Yeah, I do. I like that a lot better because yeah. I, I, that kind of does fit perfectly because yeah. I do feel like every night I have to write down these things that are in my mind because I do them every morning for the last year. And it's like I'm taking 10 minutes out of my night to write something down that's almost like I'm only writing it down because I mm-hmm. want to cross it off. Yeah. So I think that's a good idea. And then by writing the things down that I needed to do for the next day will help a lot because you're at night visual kind of visualizing like oh i need to do this this and this and then in the morning you get to check those off as like your accomplishments absolutely 
Definitely. And the list sometimes doesn't have to be 15 different things. Yeah. Yeah. If there's one thing that's really significant that I just have to get done. And it's interesting. Sometimes I even fall into the trap where I have a five-minute task, Mm -hmm. but I'm thinking about it all day. I'm thinking about it for five hours, let's say. As opposed, well, that only took me five minutes. Like Uh, overthinking it? It could be. Well, it's something that, you know, the to-do list doesn't necessarily have to be a big long list. It's yeah. really the priorities that need to get done. If you kind of evaluate quite often the tasks that you need to get done take a lot shorter than the thought that you're putting into it. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So there's a good lesson that I learned that anything that you think of that will take less than five minutes to do, do it right now. Whatever like it is, that. do it right now. Don't say don't even put it on your to-do list. Do it right now. I gotta make that call. Forget it. I'm doing it right now. That's all awesome. so have a sense of urgency yeah. to get things done. Is there a mantra you live by? Because that was a big one of mine that my grandfather gave to me. He's like, do shit now because later on you never know what's going to come up. Probably a lot, but I know like for example, when I saw my books, I gave that a lot of thought. Uh, So I try to consolidate and it was uh, stay strong, Mm -hmm. be a warrior, and keep moving forward. For me, that works because quite often you feel weak, Mm -hmm. mentally or physically weak. So it's like stay strong and be a warrior. To me, the definition of a warrior is someone who gets up and freaking moves. Yeah. And the one thing I learned a lot from these successful people is you got to keep moving forward like we were speaking about before. Definitely. You got to dust yourself off. Yeah. I made a mistake. I learn and keep moving forward. If you sit there and ponder and think about things too much, you're not going to move forward. Mm-hmm. So, you know. You got to keep it going. And speaking of that, I remember a conversation that we had because a lot of people out there, they're trying to achieve these things and the fear is probably the biggest thing that's holding them back. And I remember a conversation that we had where you said that you like to picture fear as like an actual being or like an object. Yeah. And it was like, what was it? A wolf, correct? It's interesting you say that because again, I, when I interviewed all these successful people and I, and I was really interested, I'm, I'm very much in the self-development to help myself and help other people. Yeah. So I, I said, why don't people reach their, like a basic question, mm-hmm. why don't most people reach their fullest potential? Yeah. The number one answer by far was fear. Fear of failure. Fear of of, of uh, embarrassment, mm-hmm. fear just fear, 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 fear. It just it just keeps you, um, you know, stagnant. Mm-hmm. So it's easy to say, you know, well, don't be afraid. But in most cases, what I try to do, and I work with a lot of uh, MMA athletes. Yeah. And in most cases, I always say you need to be accountable for your own success and everything else. In this particular case, when it's fear, I try to say, don't you be accountable. That's You're not accountable for it. You got some foreign being in your system. Yeah. So for me, yeah, I used a wolf. I had people that use a sorcerer or this or whatever it may be. So you want to try to make it tangible. Mm-hmm. So what I try to do is, okay, there's a wolf at the door. That wolf is trying to come into my house inside, trying to come into my house to hurt my family, to hurt me, to install self-doubt, to think that I'm a piece of garbage. In other words, all these thoughts that you have, fear holds you back. I'm Mm -hmm. not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not, I don't have the money. I'm afraid. Yeah. I don't want you to blame that on yourself. Yeah. I want you to blame that on a tangible object, whatever it may be, that tangible thing. And then I want you to look at that tangible thing and say, okay, that's the thing that is trying to take away my, my livelihood, to take away my dreams. F you, mm-hmm. screw you, I'm fighting you. So when you bring it to something tangible and you can look at it, it's fantastic. One of my friends, I won't mention, but he fights for the UFC. Yeah. And he goes, oh, Jerry, I gotta tell you something, I, I used that, it, it worked. No. And I was like, oh, cool, wonderful. Yeah. It can work. So in most cases you wanna be accountable, but in this particular case, take that fear, make it something tangible, then let's say, screw you. You're not gonna do this to me. You're mm-hmm. not gonna make me feel inadequate. I have a goal that's more important than you. Mm-hmm. And and it does work if you could do that. That is amazing. Yeah. And you can almost use that for also like, I feel like anxieties and other, which are probably all fears as well if you yeah. look into the deeper meaning, but I feel like people can use that for like depression, stress, anxieties Everything. as well. Like. Don't don't make that an internal thing. Like that's not you. That's a good way to look at it and look at it something else that is standing in your path 
to greatness and right. how is that obstacle that's in the way going to be the way and how are you going to go around it and really or through it or whatever you have to do to yeah well, you know the, here, the here's the important thing too is that you know i know sometimes people say well what's the one thing that you can ask somebody or tell somebody um you know how they could become successful and again this is something that i learned from these very successful people you have to stop the negative monologue within your brain mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we all do it right I mean, and again, I, we don't have that much time, but I would, I would try to kind of stand people up yeah. and, uh, you know, I, I would ask them, you know, how they felt about themselves when they were, uh, when they had a, a loss or whatever it may be, or they, they um, had self-doubt. And quite often throughout the day, we're like, again, we're not good enough. We're not smart enough. We're internalized. We're not good. And I always say to people, well, if I said to you, Mm-hmm. What you say to my, what you say to yourself every day. In other words, when you're down mm-hmm. and you're uh, upset about yourself, if I said those things to you, yeah, I'd be like, "Fuck you!" Yeah, <laughs> you, you'd punch me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Yet we do it to ourselves all day. Yeah, so absolutely. you're right, Justin. The, the idea to to take whatever those negative emotions are, whatever negativity that you're feeling, instead of just crunching over and saying, "Oh boy, this is really, really bad," you know. Take it outside of your body, make it tangible, and say, screw you, you're not going to let me do that. Yeah, definitely. So it's a different way of framing it, and it's worked pretty successful. That's, yeah. that's amazing. I really hope that the viewers and everyone really take that. Yes, I think seriously. that's some like, really big uh, advice. Yeah. And like, it's, it's all perception, just the way you view it, and putting it out there Correct. and not keeping it inside of you is, I think, going to be very helpful for people. Let's get some of these props in here. So I think Yeah, the, we got some I think, nice props here I think here the, other, <laughs> the other side of it now is, you know, what's your purpose in life, right? So like, that's another way to battle against these other feelings. I, I, I feel at least, I feel like most yeah. people that get depressed and they don't know what they're doing is because they're lost and they don't know what their purpose yeah. or why is. Sure. So can you explain how, how does somebody find their why or find their purpose? Well, you know, it was, it was funny. Um, I was pondering because you, you had said to kind of prepare for that. And I, and I was like, well, how do you find your purpose? And I think you find it at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> what do you mean 2 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, now, for you guys may be up. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so whenever you're sleeping, whenever there's no distractions, whenever it's just nice and quiet, that's when you find your purpose. That's when you find your priorities. That's when you kind of weigh the good and the bad and everything else. You can't let other people influence you. You have to be open-minded. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, to me, that's how I find my purpose. Really, what do I want to be? When I'm sitting there sleeping and this and that, at this stage in my life, what do I want? My purpose is to be a good husband. Uh, married for t- uh, close to 25 years to, wow. to, to, mm-hmm. to Brooke, who Congrats. you guys know. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, I Shout have out three to wonderful kids, Allie, Emma, and Austin. Mm-hmm. And knock on wood, they're the best thing in the world. I like I way I like to describe them there is a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Uh, but there's also a lot of responsibilities in order to run a household and to do all the other things that I do. Yeah. So that's my purpose. My my purpose is also trying to stay in shape. Uh, trying to be, you know, uh, pursue and learn more MMA stuff. Yeah. Which which is a, it's a never ending thing with jujitsu and everything else. You just it just never ends. Yeah. So that's kind of what my purpose is right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, your purpose and your priorities will change over the years. You know, when I was your age, yeah. it was different than than it is right now. But it, you know? oh, go ahead. Wait, because I really want to touch on that really quickly. I find that very interesting because I feel like a lot of self help books and all these other things that I read and I listen to talk about how you need one purpose. And like, you need to find that one thing. Like Gary Vee is always talking about that one thing. Like you need to go get that one thing, whatever you're good at, and just do it, do it, do it. And it's interesting because every time I talk to you and I go, Jerry, am I doing too much? Am I doing this and that? You say, no, go ahead and try those different things. Keep keep on doing a li- like a little bit of every... Like- you know, we're not as smart as we think we are sometimes. Yeah. We're, we, we, yeah you, you may know what your purpose is and you're going to pursue it. But there's nothing wrong, especially, again, when you're young and strong, to try to two, three, four different things, mm-hmm. you know, full throttle. Yeah. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. And and, and the, the, the thing that will, will um, eventually come out is what you're really good at mm-hmm. and what you're succeeding at. And then you put more effort into that. But to me, it's just to limit yourself with just one thing. Like, you guys love this podcast. I'm all in. Yeah. Absolutely. But you also have to make a living. Yeah. yeah. So you, you yeah. got to work. 
you know, when I, when I started a business, it just wasn't the business. I had to work as well, too. Mm -hmm. So, no, just, just to be solely isolated on, on one particular thing, you're leaving yourself short. You're not experiencing nothing, particularly when you're young. Yeah. Particularly when young. You don't want to do things half-assed. No. But you you want to you want to get out there and test different things and, and discover different things mm -hmm. just to say okay I have my blinders on and this is what I'm going to do for the next 2 years i suppose there's some success with that there's no uh, specific recipe for that but my advice is that you want to also become a very well-rounded person and you want to have a lot of different experiences mm -hmm. uh, so if you limit yourself to only one thing you know i i'm not a big uh, big fan of that definitely yeah. i feel like it's almost i have two things here so i feel like on that one it's almost like when you're we're kids and it's like some parents will put their kids and let them play every sport so they can find what they like and some parents will be like you're only doing this one sport and that's going to be what you're good at uh i feel like in my sense i was lucky where my my dad and mom threw me into like trying every sport and trying a lot of different things yep. to see what you like and see what you are passionate about and what you are thinking about at two in the morning and like what one of those you're never going to find that if you're you're never going to find something if you're not looking for it and doing those things. You're 100% right. You know, that's how my parents were. You know, I was in all different kind of sports. And yeah. it was up to me. Uh, you know, I would have been Bo Jackson. You guys are a little young for that. But, you know, he was <laughs> he a, played two or three sports? He, well, he was professional baseball and, and, uh, and football. Yeah. And one of the best out there. But eventually, football was for me. And, and then when football stopped, I needed, I liked the contact and competition. Yeah. So I went to MMA. But like with my kids, I turned my kids all on the sports when they were young. Mm -hmm. They didn't particularly care for it. Yeah. So my, my daughter got into acting and my other, and my son, Austin. Phenomenal into, actor. Oh my God. He, he, you know, he went into, uh, you know, musical theater. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's just you know, unbelievable. Yeah. So, so if I said, hey, no, you're only going to play football and I'm not going to expose you to other thing. He's in college now. He's got yeah. a scholarship. My daughter has a scholarship. Uh, the other one's going to be a journalist. Yeah. So, you know, you can't put somebody in a corner and tell them who, gonna, who you're going to be yeah. as a parent. But also yourself. You shouldn't put yourself in a corner and say who you're going to be. For example, Justin, with hockey. Mm -hmm. You play hockey very high level. Yeah. But eventually you got hurt and eventually you said, hey, you know what? I think I'm more than this and, and it's not my priority today. Yeah. So I'm going to go start, you know discovering other things that, yeah. that's a healthy to me a healthy thing definitely definitely yeah. thank, mm -hmm. thank you and that, and back to the what we were talking about a little earlier about like your one passion or your one thing why? and why oh. i feel like it all does wrap up into one thing and that's like what you touched on earlier is like keep moving forward because mm -hmm. it seems like everything you are doing is moving forward and yeah. growing even if it's not the same thing it's like you're growing with parenting you're growing in your marriage you're growing in success and writing and all these different things so i feel like at the end of the day a lot of people can take that and no matter what you're doing just don't get stagnant don't don't feel like you're not moving and you right. can control that by just continuing to take one step and moving right. forward so, so here's how we do that you know yeah. yes. how we do that yes. we've all heard of the why <laughs> So I actually created this. This is mine. I didn't create this. And can we buy else. this? Can we sell it? <laughs> <laughs> link, no, link in the description. No, this is mine. We were a part of the why, but I love tangible things. So what I do, and I would suggest, you know, your listeners do this. It's really cool and healthy. What I do is I take all the emotions that I feel when I've succeeded, mm -hmm. when I've uh, been proud of myself, when other people have been proud of myself, when I've won. Mm -hmm. When I've accomplished something, you feel like a hero. Yeah. And I put those emotions into my wine bottle. Yeah. Then I think back about when I disappointed myself, when I disappointed others, when I came up short, when I didn't give the full effort. And now, yeah. Yeah. I don't feel it. <laughs> yeah. You feel it. I take those emotions and I put them in the wine bottle. And then I look at the wine bottle. And I say, what emotions do I want to re-experience? Do I want to re-experience a negative outlook on myself? Let's say, say I'm tired. I don't want to work. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Okay, that's the recipe for feeling bad about myself. Well, what emotions do I really want to feel? That's my why. I want to feel good again. So this drives me to work harder. To, to, to gain knowledge, to talk to people. So your why should be not 
well, I want to be the number one podcast in the world. Mm -hmm. Your why should be, what's my passion? What can I do to get there? What are my emotions that I'm going to use? Emotions are very strong, like we spoke about the, the internal thoughts. Your emotions are extremely strong. Yeah. So if you use them to propel you forward, fantastic. If you let them drag you down, no good. Mm -hmm. So I just keep this on my shelf, and I only look at it, generally speaking, when I'm tired, I don't want to do it. Like right now, I'm hurt. Mm -hmm. I have I, I, I hurt. I uh, tore my MCL. Yeah, that was training, I got a right? neck injury. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't like it. Trying to keep moving forward. <laughs> yeah, but I say to myself, well, I got to do my rehab and this and that. Do I want to get back on the mat and experience that that emotion again? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I have to do my rehab. I have to do all these things. Yeah. Or do I just want to, you know, go on the couch and become a big fat guy? Yeah. I don't want that. <laughs> no. So that kind of drives me forward. Yeah. You so, know, so like so the why, when you have, again, something tangible, I think it's really cool. I, Use I, your emotions to propel you forward. Not to, you know, not to drag you down. Mm -hmm. I love the visuals, by the way. I feel yeah. like I found myself, well, one, relating to every single thing you said today. Uh, <laughs> but the one one big thing is like the school. Like personally, I felt like I never excelled in school either. And I almost feel like there was no visuals. Like it was all read this and recite yeah. it where it's kind of sad. And I'm sure there's teachers that do this, but I wish that they would incorporate more visual learning and things like that because there's so many people learn in so many different ways and it it seems like for you like and something like myself like really visualizing yeah. something and making it real and tangible yep. makes it real yeah. whereas something that's just like recited and read it it's like it doesn't it doesn't hold value and I don't feel like I can concentrate on that kind of well, thing. Well, to this day, if I go try to read a book, I'll get through page two mm -hmm. and I'll fall asleep. <laughs> I, my daughter has a book this thick. Yeah. And she could, oh, it took me a week to read it. I don't have that ability. Yeah. Here's another good visual. Let's yeah. talk about this. Okay? Definitely. So you talk about, you know, success. You talk about using your emotions. Okay. So this is a great image which I absolutely love. It's a uh, championship fight between Frankie Edgar and Gray Maynard. And um, it's amazing. I was there. A good friend of mine uh, took the photo. Wow. And what I try to do, I look at this and I say, well, who do I want to be? What do I want to be when I'm tired? What, you know, who, do I, who in life do I want to be? Do I want to be the guy who's holding his hands up. It doesn't have to be MMA. Yeah. It could be running your own business. It could be being a good boyfriend or girlfriend. It may be good. Do I want to be proud of myself? Can I look at myself and say, hey, I gave my full effort. I trained. You know, it, you know who do I want? I want to be that guy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or you have the option, and this is nothing against Gray, he got knocked out. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and again, he trains hard. Don't get me wrong. No disrespect for him. But in life, who do you want to be? Do you want to be the guy that says, I did it? When you're alone in the room by yourself, I did it? Or you know what? Ah, you know, I didn't put the hours in. I was tired and, I, and I'm a victim. Mm -hmm. And, you know, life isn't fair. And wine, wine, wine. Who do, who do you want to be? Is that you the guy be you, the want, you want to give, have an excuse for yourself? Yeah. Believe me, and be the guy on the ground. I have no interest in being that guy on the ground. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be that guy, and that's what should really drive you to say, okay, I want to make myself proud. I want to make other people proud. I want to accomplish my dream, and I'm going to take all those necessary steps. I'm going to gain the knowledge, you know, and, I, and I'm going to try to fulfill. And, 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 it, and if it fails and I take two steps forward, okay. And then sometimes your dream may not actually happen. So you got to redefine your dream. Yeah. You know, there's not, there's not one solution or one formula for success. Yeah. It comes in many different ways and flavors and everything else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at one point in my life, I wanted to be a football player, you know, and not that. At another point in my life, I wanted to be this or that. So, you know, things do change. You give you full effort. The main thing that you want to do is you want to be able to look back at life and you don't want to have regrets. Mm -hmm. I should have, I could have, and this and that. That sucks. Who, who wants to have a regret? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, that's a bad thing to carry. So you want to be able to look and say, you know what, I gave it 100%. Win, lose, or draw, I gave it 100%. And, you know, it is what it is.
Mm -hmm. that's awesome i and the more i look at this picture i feel like you can even go deeper like there's you can be the winner which i love and i think that's what everyone amounts to or you're saying you can be the loser but i feel like at life you could also be the spectator or the person videotaping it and i feel like a lot of people find themselves in a category here in the fans where they're watching someone live their own dreams and wondering why can't i do that and it's because they're sitting right here and i got you have um Joe Rogan over here. Oh, he's chasing his dream. <laughs> he's chasing his dream. Yeah. You oh, there's Dana. Dana, you have Charles Barkley. Yeah. So, yeah, you could really look at it, you know, and say, okay, who am I here and, and everything else. Absolutely. I love this. I yeah. love this visualization. Yeah. It really makes you visualize. It's is, is about, you know, it, is, is hard work worth it? Yeah, it mm-hmm. is, you know. Yeah, it's it's gonna make me look at a lot of things, like because you can look at a whole, all life like that too. Like, what do you what do you really want to be? Do you want to be the main character winning? Do you want to be the main character losing, or do you want to be someone spectating right. on and someone not else's life? You know, like for example, Joe Rogan is on the outside; he's not competing. Mm-hmm. But as we all know, Joe Rogan he's has the number doing one his own thing. Yeah. yeah, and then this person, whoever it may be, may not be in the ring, but they're a great broadcaster. Yeah, definitely. And this too. person may be a great lawyer. So you're not always going to be the center of attraction. That's another point. But you know what? They got front seat tickets. They're probably pretty <laughs> yeah. stable. So, you know. And that is a great thing to bring up because I feel like this day and age with social media and everything that we have got going on, a lot of people want to be that center of attention. And they feel that that's the only way to succeed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that there is way more to life. Like recently with the conversation that we've had, I'm not going to lie, I've always been that kind of guy that's wanted to have you know be that center of attention you know i was the goaltender for a hockey team like that's you know there is no other position like that besides like qb you know i wanted to do youtube and tiktok and like all these things and that's how i define my success and now we've had a conversation where i'm going to go down a different route that honestly i never expected me going down but it's there's still a path there for me to succeed the way that i want to succeed in life and you know, whatever your day job it, it is, that doesn't mean you can't do your podcast and other creative exactly, things. Yeah. You don't want to take creative things out of your mind. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I like about martial arts, believe it or not, it's a creative. Yeah. It's no, poetry and motion. It is not just, you know, brute force. It, yeah. it is your learning and you, you, you're going to get defeated and everything else. So, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just because you're giving up one thing doesn't mean you have to give up on something else. Yeah. Why? I got an inter- interesting question for you. You've lived on both sides of the track, very, very poor, and then you've lived a life where you've made a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Does money matter? You know, the answer is yeah, money does matter. It does. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the definition of success isn't money, though. It's not health. It's not family. Yeah. The definition of success is happiness. I've seen people that are in wheelchairs that are happy. A friend of mine was uh, paralyzed, uh, you know, playing football in high school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 20 years later, he's a really happy guy and he's a, he's a powerful, um, uh, you know, speaker. Um, I've seen people who, uh, you know, clean out factories and they're really happy. I've seen a lot of wealthy people with all kinds of great cars and they're miserable. Mm-hmm. The, the divorce rate is, is, is horribly, you know, horrible. Yeah. Um, so what was the question again, though? Does money matter? Does money matter? Yeah, it does matter. Because you have to pay, you know, chances are, you know, you're living at home, maybe not. But, you know, if you want a sense of independence, if you want a sense of accomplishment, it's it's not just materialistic things. Uh, but, you know, you have to have, you have to have, what do they say, food and shelter. Mm-hmm. Generally speaking, those things take money. You, you, you can't make money oh my god it's the most important thing in the world but yeah money money is important yeah it absolutely is some people make it so important that they're willing to commit fraud or do something illegal yeah so it, it can't be that important uh you know money can be stressful because the more money you make the more responsibility you have the more things you have the more other people may want it the one thing i learned about money too is that money it doesn't necessarily change the person. You know me for a long time. Yes. I'm basically the same person. Ex- yes. But, and and even my high school friends would, would say kind of the same thing, let's say. Mm-hmm. I'm basically the same person. But yeah. money changes people around you. The perception of you is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. And it's weird. It's it's a weird dynamic. But, uh, yeah, is money important? Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's you have to talk reality. Where's the line then for, like, I feel like money and time, like taking up too much time of your life? 
to try to make money to be able to live that time back i feel like some people get caught up in have you been able to find that balance between making your money and utilizing it and living with it yeah 25 years of marriage three three kids yeah uh, I made money. I made. And I you got, seem happy as well as what you mentioned. Absolutely. Success yeah. And being. I also uh, got married a little bit later. Mm -hmm. I didn't get married really young. What's later, like age wise? I was uh, 35, let's say. Somewhere okay. Right now. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are. I just saw someone. Rushing it. Not going to. I don't even know who they are, but they're like. 2022 20, maybe <laughs> i just saw them getting married but i said everyone's I was got a different dad. lifestyle yeah, so i guess yeah it depends you know it's hard to define love yeah you know, when is a good time when's not a good time yep. um but you know you have to have it's really important if you want to have any sense of happiness you have to have balance yeah, yeah. okay if you're a, you know a financial guy or an attorney or this and that you know, you got to have that half hour, hour a day for yourself to train, mm -hmm. to work out. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to make sure that, you know, your spouse and, you know, it's life is a balance. Yeah, There's definitely. no question about it. You have to have outlets, though. You have to. Have, that's why if you're changing, let's say, a career to something a little bit different, you need to keep something like this because this is your joy. Yeah. The other thing may pay the bills. You may really enjoy that, but you want to cre keep creativity within your life. You can't mm -hmm. just, what we are talking about before, yeah. just solely do one thing. No. no. You have to have a balanced life. You have to have many experiences. Yeah. And speaking on the money thing, I actually heard from Casey Neistat. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's a vlogger from YouTube. And he was like the same. He was dirt, dirt, like he was dirt poor at one point in his life. And then he became extremely rich and started this huge company that he sold to CNBC or something like that. And he said that when he was poor, or sorry, when he's rich, you have a ton of problems still. You always have, you still have mm -hmm. problems. Yes. But when he was broke, he only had one problem, not enough money. And it was very, very interesting because it was like, it seemed like everything around his life revolved around not having enough money at the time. And then when he became rich, he still had problems, but at least it it was like that big burden of not being able to find something to he's right i'll say two things yeah when you only have the one problem money mm -hmm. it's not true mm -hmm. because when you don't have the money you have a lot of self doubt yeah. you have a lot of emotional baggage when mm -hmm. you don't have the money and you feel like a loser or you can't pay your bills the big picture is yeah that's the only thing so then once he he gets the money there, there are di different problems, which brings me back to sports. And yeah. sports is a mirror of life. Yeah. It will teach you the good, the bad, the winning, the losing, everything else. Your set of problems are different from my set of problems. Uh, at any time in life, every five years, call it, you're going to have a different set of problems. So you have to learn to use the why you have to learn to use tools to learn from other people to make uh your anxiety tangible yeah so so because yes you, you know if money solved everything then you know that's it's just not the case so yeah. you're always going to have a different set of problems i think his point is that and he's trying to define something which is great but uh, his point is that you know you, you're going to trade one set of circumstances or problems for others throughout yeah. your whole life. That's just the way it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. Could it be like almost? I f I wouldn't know because I have not yet amounted to making all this money. Um, but could it be that people they want so much money and then they when they get it they change their like like live below your or live by your means right is the saying. But when you get so much money, you start buying all this fancy stuff and you're. You're almost in the same boat where you want to be here and you're only here, but now you're here, but you want to be here. Well, they think here's the problem that they have that once they make their money, mm -hmm. they think that at life is going to be great. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as your friend said, it's, it's actually not true. Yeah. It solves certain problems. It does. But it creates other problems and they're just certain internal issues that are going to just exist so you have to learn how to handle them and then you may have a spouse a boyfriend a girlfriend or whatever like that that may have a different view on what money is i come from the school that if i can afford something easily and pay it off i i do it mm -hmm. i don't i don't i only have one credit card yeah i i don't have debt yeah i, I just don't want that it would bring me anxiety it, i just don't want great. that some people like to push themselves if they could uh you know um, afford a fifty thousand dollar car, they're gonna push it for a hundred. Oh, okay, uh, if they can, you know, spend a half million dollars on a house, they're gonna push it to this. That for me doesn't work. For other people, you know, I forget who it was. Um, somebody used to say, 
you know, put all your bills up on the wall and that will inspire you every day to succeed. And I, I guess that would work for certain. We're all individuals. For me, I, I like living a little bit below my means than yeah. above. It just makes my life simpler and I don't have to worry about things. Then I have time to do other things. For yeah, myself. I really feel like that is one really reassuring to hear that someone is able to do that because that's what I hope to be able to do. But I feel like that is the key is to like the balance of time and money. And yep. it's living below your means. And you probably, if you had a hundred dollars, you know, you bought it a ten dollar whatever but you got a thousand dollars you can buy a hundred dollars something where some people have a hundred dollars they're gonna buy hundred dollars something now they're broke i'll yeah, put it on a credit card and buy 105 yeah, yeah. to me materialistic <laughs> things don't don't buy happiness yeah it mm -hmm. just doesn't they they can create more anxiety than anything else mm -hmm. you know i know you, you said you went through some like with like with rocky and just like changes as a kid but have you always been like that in the sense where like before you made your money, did you have that feeling like, okay, when I make my money, I don't plan on spending it like Money that. wasn't, I always wanted to make money, but it, it didn't, it came. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh my God, I made the money and now my life is good. Okay. Money was just the, was the um, byproduct. byproduct of hard work. Mm -hmm. Whether Which I made be. it or not, it didn't really matter in a way. Yeah, um, I made it. And yeah, you want to keep on making and you want to invest well. And you don't want to blow it. But that was never my definition. I, I come from modest means. Yeah. And all my friends back at home are very happy people. Yeah. And I would have been very happy as well, too. So money is, is certainly not the most important thing by, by any stretch of the Definitely. imagination. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Okay. So then, okay, as we get closer to the end of this podcast, I really want to, I know this is a question that I didn't prepare you for, and it might be a little too complex to give, give like a full explanation right now, but for somebody out there, you know, maybe one of the viewers watching, if they're lost and they don't know what to do with themselves right now, and I know you gave, you already given so much notes that if they haven't kind of already put the pieces together, what's a good layout for them to achieve, not even wealth, but just like success in this life i think experience i think they can't be afraid of experiencing different things because if you think you're predetermined to be something listen it's only recently that podcasts are even exist yeah right so if if you think that you're predestined not good so get out there and you know turn yourself on to many different things talk to a lot of different people Go to trade shows and talk to people. Uh, Google different types of, uh, you know, um, uh, business opportunities. Uh, you know, just experience things. Don't just put things in a category and say, no, this isn't for me. And yes, this is for me. I think particularly young people need to gather as much experience as possible. Talk to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my mind constantly changes. I, I, I have one thought pattern and then I'll talk to somebody else. Like, wow, that guy really made sense. Yeah. Um, so I think that to set your own the road to success is uh, get as much experience in you, as you can in a variety of different things. Once you... Um, identify kind of what you want to do uh it gets back to that step-by-step -step thing uh about okay what do i need to do what are the, what are the resources i need what is a step-by-step -step? who can i learn from who will be willing to speak to me um am i willing to you know i'm passionate enough about this in order to to put the hard work into this Am I willing to kind of fail a little bit just yeah. Yeah. for the sacrifice of learning? Like right now, uh, I came from the art business. Mm -hmm. So what's the newest thing out there? NFT. Yes, sir. I'm 61. So w what am I doing? Create. But I'm like, okay, I kind of know that industry. It's kind of far. I'm like, I don't understand. People want to collect digital art. Yeah, they do. So I'm kind of learning and putting some money into it. And uh, just, you know, going through it to keep myself passionate about something, to keep my interest come, to keep on learning about something, to keep on having different experiences. And really quick, I'm sure you have a question, but really quick question about that. Yeah. When you don't know how to do something, as a person 
that's I feel like this is most entrepreneurs they find the right people to help them with yeah. these projects, correct? Right. So like building a team around you, like what does that look like? How do you build a like a perfect team? Yeah, um, there's no such thing as a perfect team. Yeah, mm-hmm. but what I don't know about, like for example, I I'm not a graphic designer, mm-hmm. uh, but I looked around a little bit and and I said, wow, this guy's created some pretty cool stuff. So I uh, I emailed him. I told him about my background. You kind of want to, you know, who who am I? Why should you come and uh, and and do some work for me? Yeah. And uh, he said, oh, okay, good. You have a background. You're looking to evolve a little bit. So I'm not a graphic designer. So I spent days, you know, searching for d- designs that I particularly like. Yeah. And I found a guy. And I'm paying him, and he's doing the digital art. Now I have to, again, you can create a product, but now I have to learn the new marketing. Mm-hmm. There's different types of marketing now with a, with a cryptocurrency, and there's, uh, you yeah, know. TikTok and all these it, other new socials. It, it, just everything, you yeah. know. Um, but the blockchain, it's just, it's interesting. It, it is new technology that will be here. I'm, yeah. I'm very convinced about that. Um, so how? Um, you, you have to, uh, you know, again, surround yourself with people that you get along with. With people that you trust, uh, with people, the probably the best thing that I do, I like asking questions. Mm-hmm. I always have a list of questions. I'm going to get on the phone with somebody. I'm going to have 15 questions or 10 questions or whatever it be. I never hesitate to answer questions, and it sounds simple, yeah. but a lot of people are like I don't want to ask, and you know this and that and everything else. Uh, but you ask questions. And, and then once you have that answer, you have it forever. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I like answering questions. And that's what, when you have all these experiences as well, too, keep on asking questions. Yeah. You know? Definitely. I feel like I was going to go back to this picture, and I probably will, but I feel like it's like keep moving forward. And I feel like to a lot of people think that by asking questions, they'll, ask, they'll sound stupid and sound dumb. And it's like, good, feel, be ready to sound stupid because you'll never, ever grow if you're just sitting here thinking that, like, oh, I'm too embarrassed to ask so that. So what does that get back to? I was going to say, it gets back I feel, to fear. And I feel like, yes, to the fear, right. as well as getting back to, sometimes in life, you are going to be this guy here, yep. and you have to learn from that and what you're going to take to be this guy yep. and not accept that as, like, be, don't be scared to be that guy. Mm-hmm. Just be ready to be him and understand that you'll probably be him a bunch of times before you are him. <laughs> you know what I do? I call that going for the no. If you're going after a deal, mm-hmm. don't kill the deal before you even try it. Go try it and let it die itself. Yeah. But mm-hmm. a lot of people say, oh, I have the greatest idea in the world. Five seconds later, they give themselves a whole list of why they can't accomplish <laughs> yeah. it without even trying yeah. it. Oh, I agree yeah. with you too. The reason why people don't ask questions is the fear and most likely fear of embarrassment. Yeah. And that's what it is. So, yeah, you have to get over that. You have to also, I agree with you that you have to sometimes be that guy. If you're always this guy, you haven't tried enough. No. Exactly. You know, yeah. you're gonna, you know, you have to accept failure. It's okay. You have to be able to, and especially if you're trying, like you're going to go out and try 10 different things to find what you're passionate about. You may fail, if not at all 10, you may fail at nine of them and be that guy. But at one of them, you're probably going to be this guy. And I feel like you'll keep diving into that as your passion and you're going to fail at that again. Yep. But don't take that one failure as like your life is over. Like that doesn't define or that doesn't define you. Just keep again, keep going, keep moving forward. And don't listen to the naysayers. Definitely. I, I feel like in my career a lot, um, and I think you touched on it a little bit earlier, and a lot of people, there was that prove people wrong mindset where it's like always prove someone wrong because they're they're always trying to say you can't do it. And I feel like halfway through my career, I switched the mindset to more like prove yourself right. And it's like, don't listen. Like you just said, don't listen. It doesn't matter what they're saying. Like go out there and believe in yourself and just go and do it. And Mm -hmm. don't worry. Like you said earlier, don't think, don't, uh, don't ruin your plans overthinking the negative things that might happen. Mm -hmm. It's just go and do it. And we talk about it a lot because I do, uh, cold showers every single morning, uh, because I hate them and I, do not want to do them. And it's every morning I wake up and I'm like, All right, I'm going to start my day. Oh, I have a hurdle. It's a cold shower. And I'm like, I'm going to lay in bed a little. I'm like, oh, you're going to let that hurdle like define your life. And I, I'll sit in the, I talk about it. I'll sit in the shower, just not on, just in the shower naked, just staring at the shower head like, uh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I'm just overthinking, overthinking, overthinking. I turn it on cold. The water hits me. I'm still there. Three minutes later, I shut it off. I get into my robe and I'm warmer than I started. And it's like, what what the hell was I worried about? But I made a three-minute shower take 30 minutes because I was anticipating and overthinking 
how bad something and, and might I, be. I really like that. That's great. So when do you use that? You use that thought mm -hmm. about when you ha you're struggling to get something done yeah. or whatever it may be. Or Wait, I just did that the 30 days in a row. Yeah. Yeah. I can get through that. What's the big deal about trying this? Exactly. So yeah. Those types of things, I think, are again, it's a tangible thing, and I think it's actually very productive. It just, it just shows you. Whatever like, it takes to psych you up. Exactly. Yeah, and I was, and I'm sure a lot of people out there, when they're listening to that, they're thinking because I actually found myself just thinking a moment ago, how would I work on that? Like, how would I work on being okay being that guy? And it's just like what you said earlier. It's experience, and yeah. it's putting yourself in a spot where you're going to end up being that guy. Mm. <laughs> and that's We've the all only been way. There, whether you choose to believe it yeah. or not, yeah. We've all, we, and anybody who who doesn't admit that they've been there is just is, is fooling themselves. And mm -hmm. We've all been defeated. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that a lot of people who get defeated stay defeated. Yeah. And they, and they that's, own it. That's not acceptable. And I feel like they can use your that strategy where we're saying anger and stress as well as like if you get defeated, don't say that that you're someone who gets defeated and you're weak. Take that weakness and put it out and say that weakness is now what I have to beat to be a success. Correct. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Definitely. I feel like we can use your lessons for a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Absolutely. You want to touch on the success? I mean, I was going to ask my question, but you already answered it. I was going to Oh, my, yeah. My big question is how you define success, but you've already mm -hmm. said happy to be happy. Baby. Yeah. Just being happy. Which yeah. I, I very much, in the simplest answer, is like what I would relate to as well is mm -hmm. no matter what you're doing, don't let the... Don't think like something else is worth more than your happiness and your time. Like enjoy what you're doing, even if it sucks and you're it, it's terrible. Understand that it's your life, and like you're getting through this to amount to more, and just do it with a smile on your face. I feel like yeah, and and, and you know, success and is not always happiness. Though. Yeah, success is dealing with defeat. Success is dealing with negativity. Success is dealing with the naysayers. Success is overcome your own internal anxiety so quite often your road to success sucks mm -hmm. yeah but looking back and not having regrets win lose or draw i'm a happy guy exactly mm -hmm. now before we wrap this up and i know you've already pretty much touched on it but i want to ask again what would be that one piece of advice one thing that you can leave to somebody trying to achieve their goal um, let's see. The One, most important. The most <laughs> important thing is um, stopping the negative self-talk. Why? Because you're always going to, there's always going to be competition. There's always going to be somebody out there that's that could potentially beat you at something. Mm -hmm. The last person that you want to beat you is yourself. Yeah. So you have to be accountable for your own success. And that's a, that's a strong mindset. Be a, you can't be a victim. You have to be accountable for your own success and stop the negative self-talk. And you have to understand we all do it every single day yeah. way too much. Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have the money. And things aren't fair. That's all That's all putting roadblocks up. So the one thing would be, you know, I'm going to give you two things or, or one A and one B. Okay. Be <laughs> accountable for your own success yeah. and stop the negative self-talk. Again, the strategy that we spoke about is making something tangible. Yeah. Take it, take that out, take your responsibility away from it. Make something tangible is is a strategy which we spoke about. But again, be accountable of your own success. No excuses, no victim mentality, and uh, stop the negative self talk. Mm -hmm. Stop the negative. Imagine if somebody said to you, "What do you say to yourself?" Yeah, be pissed. Hey, who the fuck is this person? The nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you should just be thanking them because you got to start talking to yourself more more positive. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is there anywhere that they could reach out to you if they wanted to? Anybody wants to reach out to you or no? No, no, no right? Any shout outs you want to yeah, give? They, they can get, um, you know, they can get, the, get the books if yeah, they want. Yeah, get the books. Uh, Everything will be in the description. Just, uh, by the way, the, just to let me tell you how I got inspired for the, for the second book. Yeah, because this yeah. was the first one. Yeah. Yes. So... I have, you know, three kids, the best kids in the world, and these so-called experts out there are telling you, you just read about it and see it about it, that millennials are a bunch of losers, that they are entitled, that they'll never amount to anything. And I was like, what are you freaking kidding me? Who are you to say that these young people are a bunch of losers? And we've seen them. It's, yeah. it's crazy. So my whole thing is, is that, you know, do they need some old school? That's why I called it old school success. Do they know, need some old school advice from some old guy like me? Yeah, mm -hmm. they need some old school advice. 
but they're certainly not a bunch of losers. Yeah. So that's where Lee inspired me to write the second book to really provide old school success for the for the younger generation. Say screw you to all these naysayers out there mm-hmm. um, of, of the generation. Shout out, of course, to my lovely wife Brooke, <laughs> who is the best. Uh, Austin, who I love. Emma, who I love, and Allie, who I love. My kids, <laughs> and of course my my doggies and everything else. So, yeah, that's and amazing. you guys, you guys are pleasure to uh to work with and thank you for coming on i really appreciate it yes, seriously giving definitely. us your time of day we're definitely going to need an episode two to like dive in more deeper into and a lot three of three and, yeah, and four and five <laughs> you guys can find these books down in the description and uh again thank you so much for coming seriously thank you Jerry. see you guys in the next it episode awesome. peace, peace. <laughs>